my great pleasure to be joined by Josh Frydenberg, the Minister for Environment and Energy. Minister, you've just opened the Energy Consumers Australia Foresighting Forum 2017. What did you tell participants in your remarks? Well, I outlined how significant the changes that are occurring in our electricity system, probably the biggest changes in more than a century, as we go from power being generated by synchronous uh, sources, uh, and particularly baseload coal, to now much more intermittent sources of power, particularly wind and solar. Uh, it's going from being a centralised system to a much more decentralised system where Australia has the highest take up on a per capita basis of uh, solar PV on people's roofs um, heating their homes. Um, so we're seeing a dramatic transformation and I outlined how that was occurring, but also the reform agenda going forward. And for us, energy security and affordability is absolutely key as we transition to a lower emissions of future. So I talked about the Finkel review and uh, the work that our chief scientist is doing uh, leading a reform agenda uh, to ensure the stability of the system. I talked about our priority for reducing prices by getting reforms into the gas transportation sector and we've agreed through the COAG Energy Council the biggest suite of reforms in more than two decades. I talked about limited merits review and networks and how they can appeal the decisions of the Australian Energy Regulator and the changes that we've agreed again at COAG to uh, ensure that we can keep a lid on network prices which make up half of the household electricity bill. And then I also talked about changing consumer preferences and ensuring we have sufficient protections in place as new technologies come into the market and new systems start to operate. The theme of this event is collaborating for a consumer-driven future. Is there a particular one of those issues you mentioned that you think is conducive to people working together to find solutions for? Well, clearly technology is the big swing factor here and it's occurring all around us. And so hearing from consumer groups with the input of others uh, as to how we can protect consumers and advance the interests of consumers to give them the most choice available, uh, as well as um, ensuring that they're protected when they're making those choices. That's what we, uh, we look for uh, in terms of ideas and suggestions from from the sector and if they can come together on a great set of reforms that would be very helpful. Uh, they know what our priorities are, security, affordability and lower emissions. Um, any sets of, uh, any set of uh, uh, suggestions from, uh, from, the, from the sector which is agreed makes our job a lot easier at the Commonwealth level. And finally, we talk a lot about energy supply, where energy comes from. Should we also be thinking about energy use, how productive we are with what we have? Absolutely. The, de the demand side is absolutely critical in ensuring that we don't put too much stress on the grid at times of peak demand. Um, we can reduce significantly the costs if you don't have to go through that gold plating process, which is, is, is helping the system meet those, those peak demands. If you can better, better manage um, better manage uh, consumer choices and the demand. So um, that is very important. And the area that we're focusing on is the National Energy Productivity Plan. Um, that's designed to uh, increase productivity by 40% by 2030. And whether it's the work that we've done around the built environment or appliances or other areas, we're seeing substantial improvements uh, in the efficiency um, of those sectors. And as a result, less demand and less pressure on the grid, which ultimately means more stability and lower prices for consumers. Minister Frydenberg, thank you very much. Nice to be with you.